All right, hello, hello, and welcome to VC Economics, the new study design for Unit 3 and 4. We're going to be starting with Area Study 1, Microeconomics, and today is going to be Lesson 1, where we're talking about relative scarcity, production possibility frontiers, which are new insular study design now at Unit 3 and 4, although you would have done it in Unit 1 and 2, and the three basic economic questions. So when we talk about these, if we get straight into it, your teacher's probably going to give you a generic talk about how serious VC is, tell you about your stacks, etc. That's not my job. That's their job. So have fun with that part in your classes. But we're going to get straight into our key knowledge, which today is all about the concept of relative scarcity, including needs and wants, resources, opportunity costs, and the production possibility frontier or model, and the three basic economic questions. So our learning intention for today is to understand how resources are allocated in Australia. And that's going to be for this whole topic is all about how resources are allocated in Australia. So what we want to be able to do by the end of this video is hopefully you can explain how relative scarcity can impact resource allocation. Hopefully you'll be able to construct and analyze a production possibility frontier. And ideally, you'll be able to distinguish between needs and wants. The first thing that we're going to start talking about is relative scarcity. So relative scarcity is known as the basic economic problem. Why it is the basic economic problem? is because we have unlimited needs and wants, but only limited resources to fulfill them. Every time someone's needs or wants are satisfied, a new one appears. The second you finish eating a sandwich, you wanna eat some chocolate. Like every time you satisfy one want, there is another want that comes up. You get a new video game, a new video game is gonna come out very, very soon after that. So we only have limited resources to satisfy these unlimited needs and wants. Therefore, we have to make decisions about how to allocate our scarce resources in a way that maximizes living standards. We only have a limited amount of resources to allocate, so we need to work out the best way to allocate them where everyone is gonna be best off. And that is a really, really difficult thing to do. So that's relative scarcity. Unlimited needs and wants, limited resources to fulfill them. You're probably gonna to have to define it on a sack. You need those two key things. So needs and wants. Needs refer to necessities which we require for survival. So some examples of needs are things like food, water, clothing, shelter, electricity, things that if you don't have them, eventually you will die. Wants, on the other hand, refer to things that are not a necessity for survival, but will improve our quality of life. So this could be nicer clothing. It could be having a nice Kathmandu jacket that keeps you warm in winter. It's not necessarily a need, but it's gonna make your life a little bit better. Things that are luxuries, so um, food that you don't necessarily need, but you enjoy. So for me, that would be Thai food. I don't need to eat Thai food, but I love eating it because it's delicious. Snack foods, uh, video games, etc. Very interesting one to talk about now. Would internet access be a need or a want for a student in 2023? You've thought about that for a few seconds. Technically, you would argue that internet access is a need. You need it for school. You need it for like almost everything these days. If I need to pay bills, etc. If I don't have the internet, I am screwed. So needs, something you, if you don't have it, you will not survive. Wants, things that improve your quality of life. So then we get into resources. So in VC economics, we look at three main types of resources. Sometimes in some textbooks, etc., there'll be a fourth one called entrepreneurial. We don't look at that because it's not technically in the study design. So our three types are natural resources, which are gifts of nature. Things that exist with no human interference. So land, water, air, etc. I once had a student in a sack use an example of cheese. Cheese is not a natural resource because there is some human production element to creating it. If you see cheese in the wild, do not eat it. It hasn't occurred naturally. It will probably do some damage to you. Then we've got labor resources. Labor resources are the human skills and talents used to produce goods and services. So a doctor, a road worker, a nurse, a teacher, anything where someone is doing something physical with their skills, that is going to be labor resource. And then we have capital resources, which are the physical plants and equipment used to produce goods and services. So a pizza oven, a delivery van, this laptop, microphone, etc., to do my current job. So some resources, we already talked about this, um, reference entrepreneurial ones, but there's never been a specific thing about that because it's not technically in the study design. So we're always going to keep it to these three. So if you ever get asked about resources, these are the three that you're going to talk about. Then we've got opportunity costs. So getting back to our problem of relative scarcity, so our unlimited needs and wants and limited resources to fulfill them, every production decision we make means that the resources are not being used for something else. Um, I was kind of um, trying to relate this to how students would feel. If I gave you $20 right now, there's a whole bunch of things you could buy. Most of you would probably go and buy food. I know a lot of you would go straight to KFC, 
buy twenty dollars worth of KFC. The second you spend that twenty dollars on KFC, the opportunity cost is anything else you could have spent that twenty dollars on. You could have spent it on McDonald's. You could have saved it. It's all these other things. What you're giving up is the opportunity cost. So it's the production foregone by choosing the next best alternative. So a economic example of that is by spending $70 billion on JobKeeper, which the government did during COVID, um, which was a wage subsidy that was meant to give to businesses that were struggling during COVID, that money could not be injected into education that would create more skilled labor for the future. So that $70 billion couldn't be spent on something else that would have benefited the economy. That's the opportunity cost. It's what's being given up. To illustrate this sometimes, we use what's called a production possibility frontier or diagram, and that gets shot into a PPF. The PPF shows all the different production possibilities if a nation was to allocate all their resources between producing two specific goods or services. So by doing this, it outlines all the production possibilities that exist, the opportunity costs and the trade-offs which will occur when a country makes different production decisions as well as the point where living standards are maximized. And in this instance, whenever you're looking at a production possibility diagram, the point where the most is being produced is when um, living standards are gonna be maximized because there is gonna be the most for society. All points along the curve. So when we talk about the curve, we are talking about this part along the edges here, all parts along this curve, we are being um, producing to our maximum potential. We're using all of our resources as best as we can. I point inside the curve, so you see this point A, which is just right above me over here. If we are inside that curve, it means we are not using our resources to our maximal potential. So we are being inefficient. We're not using everything that we have access to. And therefore there might be higher unemployment and things along those lines. Any point outside the curve, so you see this point X out here, we're producing beyond our capacity, which in the long term is going to be unsustainable. In the short term, we might be able to do that, but it means we'll be burning through our resources faster and it may have negative future impacts on the economy and future generations. So the production possibility diagram or frontier shows all the different pros production possibilities. If a nation was to move from producing at point B to point D, so we've got those here, if you go from point B to point D, this would have an opportunity cost. So in this weird diagram here, on one axis, we've got the quantity of guns produced. On this other axis, we have the quantity of butter produced, which is weird. I'll write that in here because I'm hiding it with my um, camera window here. So when we move from production possibility B to D, it means we are going to be producing less guns to produce more butter. So the opportunity cost here would be the number of guns which are no longer produced at point D. So the number of guns you're giving up to produce more butter, that is the opportunity cost. It would also have a trade-off. So the trade-off would just outline the amount of guns which are lost, but also the amount of butter gained. So how many guns you're giving up, but how much butter you're getting back in return for that. That is the trade-off there. So for our point where we were talking about at X outside here, that is unsustainable in the long term, a country could sustainably move its curve out to that point and create a new production possibility frontier if they were to increase their productive capacity. So our productive capacity is the most we can produce at any point in time because we're limited by our resources. And we can increase our productive capacity through a few different methods. So one is education and training for workers. If you educate and train your workers, they should be able to get more output per unit of input because they're more efficient and therefore you're producing more with the same amount of resources as you had before. You could implement new technology and therefore new technology may be more efficient and you can produce more overall. You could also discover new resources and discovering new resources obviously means that you're able to produce more because you've got more resources available. Then the last thing we're gonna go through for today is the three basic economic questions. These three questions are important because basically they give businesses an idea of what they should produce, how much they should produce and who they're producing it for to make sure that it maximizes profitability, make sure that there's demand for the good or service and therefore make sure that the economy is moving smoothly. So the first question is what and how much to produce. This involves a business conducting research into the market to discover the demand for the specific good or service they wish to produce and the correct amount to produce to limit waste. The second question is how to produce. So this refers to the combination of labor and or machinery 
which is going to be used to produce a good or service. So if you are doing a service, machinery is often not going to be as useful to you. Whereas if you're producing something in a factory, machinery might be a way to maximize your productivity. And then the last question is for whom to produce, which is who's the target market? What do they want out of the product and how much are they willing to pay? So what's the quality going to be like? Um, what do they need from it? What do they want it to look like? Are they going to buy it? What is their age group? What is their income like? All these kind of factors are going to be really important to making sure that you are producing the right product at the right price for the right people. So that is it for the first lesson of year 12 economics. I hope this was helpful to you. If you ever have any questions at all, feel free to comment below or email me, sean at therunningeconomy.com. Um, I'll be doing videos for all this new area studies. So they'll be coming. They're all in a playlist here. The link to the playlist will be in the description below. Other than that, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Goodbye.